So let me make sure I'm on physics 4C thread. And I'm just going to ask each question one at a time. Uh, maybe it'll be right. Maybe it'll be wrong. Uh, I hope I remember the right, um, the what I, not, I'm pretty sure I know what the right answers are. I hope I remember what I put in as a model answer. It's been a while since I've written them, so I might not remember them perfectly myself. So, um, uh, all right, so this is the question. Let's ask ChatGPT and March 14th version. That might actually be a new version. I uh, don't think I've seen that before. So, example. Yeah, okay, not exactly initial frames of reference. Let's see if it's giving the correct reason. They are in motion, which itself might not disqualify them. Because if they're moving in a straight line, then that's inertial frame of reference. Earth rotates on its axis, all right, so any given spot on the surface of Earth might not be uh, inertial reference frame because it's rotating. And yeah, this part is important, revolves around the Sun. And the Sun orbits the center of the Milky Way galaxy, yeah. They are not uniform, and the velocities are due to... Okay, yeah. Uh, we open make this approximation that Earth is an inertial frame of reference known as... Rotating reference frame approximation. Um, I don't think I'm familiar with that phrase. Um, this approximation assumes that the motion of objects on the surface caused only by the rotation of. Um, yeah, I, this is way off. Um, so, the really the key approximation we make is that the uh, but that the centripetal acceleration associated with the, the circular motion, it's not uh, it's not significant. It's a significant to, uh, it's not significant compared to other things that are involved, other accelerations that may be happening. And there's other approximation that I prop that, that we could make that um, that's probably not in the model answer because it's more of a upper division, graduate level kind of thing, um, which I will put it as in the form of question to the chat GPT. So please describe uh, what is meant by uh, momentarily co-moving inertial reference frame. Uh, so what I was saying about the whole, uh, the rotating uh, reference frame approximation, I no, I, I don't even know if that's a common thing. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it's not. Um, it just <laughs> It's new to me. But this is definitely a phrase that I've seen used in my graduate uh, physics classes. So. Yeah, so its answer about this is also wrong because it has to, it fails to mention stuff like acceleration. It's really this is what because um, you know if uh, something is moving at a constant velocity, then the momentarily co-moving inertial reference frame is the actual the inertial reference frame. You use this when you are trying to attach an inertial reference frame to something that's accelerating, so that you can do the analysis in that momentarily co-moving reference frame. Okay, let me put my uh, put the second question in the chat GPT thing and let me create take its response. So you know, first question, I guess it's uh, mostly right, except the weird thing about mentioning this rotating reference frame approximation. Um, it's a thing that I never mentioned, and I'm not even sure if it's, it's an actual thing because chat GPT is known to hallucinate. Um, Hallucinate facts. <laughs> so, anyways, the known duration to whom does the elapsed time frame takes longer? Yeah. I see. So, it's uh, asking you basically about the time dilation, um, which according to uh, differently, different uh, consider 
duration, like a decay of a radioactive particle, uh, an elapsed the time for the longer for an observer moving relative to the process. Uh, for a moving with the, yeah, that's a correct description of time dilation. Observer moving uh, is moving at different velocity, therefore experience time differently. Moving relative with the process with the major interval of proper time. Proper time for the process. Uh, proper time is the time interval between the same location. Yeah. Yeah, so the answer is correct. Um, so let me pose this as in the form of the question, uh, which is that, um, uh, so, so you know, this is something that you've seen in the lecture, which is the phrase, uh, moving clocks are slower. Um, so I will ask it in the form of the question for the chat GPT. Uh, please explain what is meant by moving clocks are slower. So, anyways, <laughs> I just want you to put that into record. That's why. But so, ChatGPT's answer is um, correct. I guess the only improvement one could make is I don't think it actually mentioned the phrase time dilation. So, if it mentioned it, all right, that would have been better. But yeah, that answer is fine. There's no uh, red flag or things I would point out as, oh, that's wrong. Let me just copy and paste this in. Cosmic ray muon is about. Uh, I have to do this manually if we equal 0 0.995 C. Because uh, the, the equation doesn't paste correctly. Um, yeah. I gotta actually read the question. <laughs> so this advanced time dilation describes the same events from the perspective of muon, which would be proper time. Well, relative okay. Uh, it's, let's see if it mentions length. From the perspective of a muon traveling in a speed, it's a path from the, yeah, shorter due to length contraction. Yeah. Uh, that is, um, <laughs> that is the correct answer. <laughs> However, the muons only need to thanks to affect it, right. Uh, according to the muon's lifetime. Ah, that is wrong. According to an observer on, the, on Earth, muon has longer lifetime than this, which is not enough time. Uh, however, due to time dilation. Yeah, this is a confused wrong way of stating it. So that this paragraph is definitely wrong, uh, which is good for me because I want ChatGPT to be wrong. <laughs> I don't want it to be the perfect tutor, perfect tool that, you know, which uh, depending on the progress of artificial intelligence, which it might actually get there, but, um, but, <laughs> but you know, um, it, uh, it also might not. So, <laughs> um, um, so this definitely is um, something that maybe future version of ChatGPT will get right. But right now, it's not getting it right. So thus, from the perspective of the muon, the journey appears to take the same amount of time as if, we, yeah, which is right. Uh, while from the perspective of the muon, the travel, uh, now this is not right. Um, so in, in terms of its relative speed, so observer on Earth does measure muon to be traveling at this speed. And the muon, as it's muon, as the muon is measuring its relative speed to Earth, so it's move, seeing the Earth moving towards it, uh, it would measure Earth as moving towards it at 0 0.995 c. So, um, so, um, so in that perspective, it's a. Uh, uh, it's not appear, It's not traveling at a slower rate or any of that stuff. Um, so. From the perspective of observer on Earth, um, muon will uh, be decaying slower than it normally would have. So if a muon were at rest on Earth, it would be decaying in about two microseconds. But because it's traveling at this speed, it would live longer. It would decay in, I don't know, six microseconds, 10 microseconds, whatever is given by the gamma factor that's associated with this. 
So, so that would be the correction for this paragraph. The second paragraph, I would just strike it entirely because it's, uh, uh, it's confusingly stated. So, anyways, uh, let me do the fourth and the last question and see if the chat GPT will get, you know, two out of four right or three out of four right. Okay, general physics. Uh, why have we not? Uh, I think it's gonna get it right. It's a pretty easy question. Um, noticeable only, yeah, high compared to, yeah. Uh, are much smaller than speed of light, therefore, yeah. Moreover, these effects seem counterintuitive. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, but this is not, I don't think that's really the. Uh, counterintuitive and contradictory part because I think people understand time dilation well enough. Um, it's a more of a, a finer point, more nuanced point that um, that we'll cover, I think, next week, not this week. We don't have enough tools to cover it properly. Um, I think the contraction occurs. Yeah, yeah. So this, um, I would say um, it's not incorrect, but if um, it's one of those things that if uh, in two weeks, if a student in my class is saying this, I would be saying, oh, you got that from ChatGPT. Because I emphasize this every time this comes up. The fact of time dilation itself, the fact of length contraction itself, I don't think that's all that counterintuitive. It, the, that there's a, such a physical effect, people understand that fine. Once you are told, it's not all that difficult to understand. Um, what is potentially counterintuitive is this. Let me give this as a statement of the time dilation paradox. Uh, consider two people. Uh, let me just do. Uh, or let me see if a ChatGPT is aware of time dilation paradox. Uh, uh, please describe um, what uh, time dilation paradox is. If it doesn't explain it correctly, I will describe it um, to the ChatGPT. Drivers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so this is the actual statement. So from the perspective of the moving observer, it's the stationary observer who is moving. Yeah. So it's a uh, um, so once you think about something like this, the fact that time dilation is actually symmetric, then uh, that, that is paradoxical. <laughs> and uh, the, the tool to actually resolve it, you need a space-time diagram, which we will introduce next week. So we'll do that um, then. So, all right, so this covers um, the, so I, I guess in terms of, evaluate, yeah, it's an easy question. So ChatGPT got it right. So it got four out of three right, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, when my colleagues who teach things, uh, subjects like English, history, when they're freaking out about ChatGPT, I was thinking, hey, it only gives a B minus answers. I'm not worried, but there might be a future where uh, it's not <laughs> giving B minus answers. <laughs> um, so, but I'm still not worried because, as you've seen, uh, one, my reliance on is. Um, do you uh, students appear to understand physics when we are interacting in real time in person? So, because that's my really ultimate test. Uh, I'm not really worried about ChatGPT because, uh, you know, so far they haven't come up with a AI that can like speak words in your head and give you the answers as we are interacting in real time. So if you are using this as a learning tool, all right, fine use it as a learning tool. What I care is that you are learning from it. 